So the Composer's Cafeteria, um, there was a group at Yale called Sheep's Clothing, which started out as a class that was taught by Martin Bresnik. Ultimately, we, I, I have to say, I take credit for being the first one to write a piece for the ensemble. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so gradually it became largely people, uh, us writing pieces for each other to play. Right. And so like, uh, basically... There's a lot of them these days, like Bang on a Can, Composer Collective. Where, so in fact, Bang on yeah. a Can came out of it. Um, yeah. Bang on a Can, uh, those three guys, Wolf, Julia Wolf and um, David Lang and Michael Gordon, yeah. were graduate students who came the year after I left. Right. So at least, I don't know if Julia was involved, but the other two, I believe, were, and that's where they got the idea from the all-night concert, because we would do an all-night concert, mm -hmm. which Martin actually got from Terry Riley doing his all-night concerts. Right. So, so they, was... their first marathons were came from that. Right. That it's... was the origin of Bang on a Can. Right. And East Coast, this, West Coast. Right. right. And the direction they went was that they were three composers. They Each of them plays a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think Michael more than the other two, but the other, but they they're mostly composers, and so they would hire professional you know top professional musicians to play. And the first original idea was a mix of like Milton Babbitt on the one hand, and you know you know the history. So 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 but for, but did for, they know for, the yeah so so a mixture of the old <laughs> serialists and post serialists on the one hand these these university guys, and then the avant-garde on the other. So uh, otherwise known as the uptown and the downtown crowd in New York. <laughs> um, plus improvisers, jazz musicians, right. as, as it developed. And it ended up being mostly the uptown people kind of filtered away. Mm -hmm. um, not entirely, but mostly. Anyway, but, but they're, the thing that they kept was from Sheep's Clothing was this notion of informal, fun concerts of music that wasn't being presented elsewhere um, for people who were informed by a kind of rock aesthetic. Hmm. Um, what they kept from classical new music concerts was that they were hiring top performers, and then they established the Bang Out of Can All-Stars, who were these top musicians, right. and they wrote for those guys. Um, on the other hand, what we took from it in forming the Composers Cafeteria, we held on to the notion of it being a, co a cooperative. Like, the whole politics of it were important to us, although I don't know if we would have put it in those terms. The structure of it, I, we would have just said, that it that it's an ensemble that writes for itself. It's like this Composers should write, should should be performers. Performers should be composers. Everyone should write. Everyone should play. Yeah, that was our idea. It was kind of this. So so it was a cooperative. Um, I remember and, and, a, and a sort of yeah. eh, years into the socialist anarchist right. Um, well, it's kind of politics East, again. The East Coast West Coast, right? But you came in during the last days. It was already starting to die. The end days. The, 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 end the days. early, the early days. Um, it was it was a fairly small group. Everyone could play their instruments fairly well, and there are a few people who could play really well. Mm -hmm. um, and everyone wrote, and it was that was the ideal, right? And we had this. We had our motto was every piece deserves to be heard once, at least once. I think maybe it wasn't uh, so magnanimous. Yeah. So 
as it went on, a few of the best players dropped out because they were busy, they, they had other gigs, blah, 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 that was part of it. And then the other thing that started to happen was these people would come in and they would hire, they would get their friends to play their pieces, which, so, so these people we'd never even met <laughs> would come in and we called them, you know, those were the ringers. And then there was this motto of no more deadbeat ringers, <laughs> that's what we would say. And then we would try to, we would want to get rid of those composers who would come in right. and were doing that. Um, that's around when you show up. Yep. And then I I don't know if you remember this, but you you, you weren't really that interested in the whole aesthetic because you saw where it was, and and so your interest was in forming a group, right. which became the manufacturing of humidifiers. I think we saw ourselves as sort of like the Bang on a Can All Stars, like that we were, except that they don't write their own music, I, but we were gonna we were gonna be we were like a chamber music ensemble that happened to be bass guitar. Yeah, I don't, we didn't, I know, I didn't, I we didn't th see ourselves as a jazz band. No, not at all. I never thought of us as a. I never thought of us as a bang on a can or anything. Because when I think it of those guys, yeah, that's when I think of bang on a yeah. can, I think of like someone's going to write music and then you're going to have you know, you know, it's going to you know they're going to play Andreessen. We weren't going to do that. Right. But what was cool for me was that you know I was still fairly and still even now compared to you, pretty much a neophyte in terms of of free jazz. Like, mm. I, you know, I had come from rock and pop right. and then got into, you know, because Zappa talked about Verez. So I went to contemporary classical right. and, and, and Zanakis and all that kind of stuff. And then I went to CalArts and totally geeked out on that stuff. Yeah. But still at the same time, I really did like a lot of Braxton's music. And I, uh -huh. but I wasn't, I wasn't inside of it in the same way that you guys were. So it was an education for me to work with you guys. Right. Because I was learning about that stuff and sort of applying that you know to my compositional aesthetic and and all of that stuff right yeah so yeah it was an interesting period there because um there were a bunch of bands that were like us and yep. um you know where various people wrote the music where it was semi-improvised semi-written right. um and um none of those bands considered themselves a jazz band but that's right. You know, if you just heard it, that might be the, you might think it was, or maybe it would be like art rock. Exactly. Um, but usually without any vocals, or if you were, had vocals. with you it's yeah. great to have you here yeah. um, and to talk to you and um and uh thanks thank you hopefully this is just the first of many occasions where we get together and play and eat and, and talk yeah we should we should have one of those shows like old man in hats talking about music isn't that like right. you know you've got the the fishing with john and you've got like comedians in cars yeah. having coffee and we could just be like musicians in hats just talking about shit yeah i mean basically i mean we're not really doing we're not eating we're not doing anything no. we're just talking about shit yeah wasting everyone's time yeah musicians in hat wait hats wasting everyone's time <laughs> i like that i i think that's a solid <laughs> solid uh I'm, I'm down with that mm -hmm.